You're watching UNI TV. Did you know that Kurt Warner is the only MVP from the state of Iowa? Welcome to the Prowl. The passion, the purple. This is the Prowl. Hello and welcome to the first edition of UNI TV's The Prowl. I'm Nathan Grieve. And I'm Mike Lieb. We are very excited to bring you an inside look at the latest news regarding Panther sports. To give us a deeper look at our preparation for this show, let's take a look at this special feature made by our very own Ian Shilonik and Sean Dengler. By now, you've probably figured out that you are watching The Prowl, but what you don't have figured out is just what The Prowl is. Truth is, we're still trying to figure that out too. What we can tell you is that this show is the product of Eric Braley's sports journalism class, which is being offered for the first time in UNI history. The class UNI sports TV journalism had never been offered before here at the University of Northern Iowa, and this is something that I'm definitely passionate about, being an alum of the UNI electronic media major and getting my start in sports broadcasting here at UNI. And there's so many talented students here at UNI that, that need the experience and a chance to really um, practice and get valuable hands-on experience. So this class is a perfect opportunity for them to put together a fun, entertaining sports program that is great for the university and the community. It's reality TV at its finest. You never know what student athlete, what professional athlete's gonna have a good game. You don't know what team's going to win. So following sports as a broadcaster, uh, as a producer of a TV show, it's the next best thing from actually being on the field or on the court. We decided early on that there should be a heavy emphasis within the team of going beyond what most people think a sports show can do. Sure, we've got football, basketball, wrestling. We'll tell you all about the sports and shine a spotlight on some of the athletes who compete on them. But we also wanted to highlight some of the things that people don't know much about. Things like fencing club, or swimming, or chess club. We're excited about anything that people do whether it's for fun or for fierce competition. The Prowl team is excited to be on the forefront of this new chapter in UNI TV's history. Uh, I like the brainstorming aspect. I like having a show that's from nothing, like starting from nothing, and then we build a show, and we get to throw out ideas of what we want and what we would like to see and what we wouldn't like to see. And uh, we get, yeah, we get to create a show, basically, which that you don't ever get to do that with traditional news shows they're already there and you fall into the position but this you are you are creating as you're you're discovering it as you create it and that's really interesting I feel and I'm really excited just because it is new and I'm excited just to like go out there and explore the different like activities that are out there so that people are getting involved in I mean obviously this is mostly sports based but I mean there are so many different sports that people don't know about like there's like is chess a sport, fencing, uh, roller derby, like people don't know about these kind of unique and obscure sports. So it's gonna be interesting to kind of be able to go deeper into yeah, those and not only oh, yeah, inform no, the people yeah, for the show what's happening in those like sports, but also informing our viewers. We've already made some big strides in our short history. We've started a social media campaign on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. The athletes, as well as some other special guests that we've reached out to, have been really excited to be involved. UNI TV is proud to present The Prowl to our viewers, and we hope that you enjoyed this and all our future broadcasts. The women's basketball team is having a monumental season. Let's take a look at Madison Weekly, a key player in the success of the team. The UNI women's basketball team is having a great season. The team is ranked third in the Missouri Valley Conference with a record of eight wins and two losses. This year's team is led by starting point guard Madison Weekly. Madison attended Benton Community High School, where she lettered in basketball all four years and earned first team all state, first team all conference, and first team all district. The Benton Bobcats qualified for the girls state basketball tournament three years in a row behind Madison's outstanding play. 
Madison's success at Benton Community quickly transferred over to college play. As a true freshman, she started the first 10 games as point guard, averaging 10 and a half points per game before suffering a mid-season injury, causing her to miss five games. Now in her sophomore season, Madison is the team's leading scorer and one of the top players in the Valley. This season, she is averaging in the double figures and points behind her smooth shot. I think it started when I was young. Uh, when I was like in first grade, that's when I kind of learned how to shoot with like the proper form and stuff. And it was just a lot of repetition over the years, so, so kind of build up to be able to shoot like I do now. I've learned a lot since my freshman season. Last year was kind of like a new system, new game. This up at playing in college, it's a lot more quicker, so it took me a while to adjust to that, and the physicality is a lot. It's a step up from high school, so it's just taking me time to adjust that, but I'm starting to get the hang of it. She came in really good, so, <laughs> but her shot has improved, her dribbling has improved. I think the biggest thing is her patience and court awareness. Madison is only five feet, seven inches tall, which is short compared to most of her opponents. I'm definitely shorter, the shortest one on the court usually. So you have to find different ways to like get to the hoop and you won't be able to always just finish because everyone's so much taller than you. So you really have to like adjust your game for that. And just being calm out on the court, I never try and get like too high or too low, just kind of try and stay even keel out on the court. In only her sophomore season, Madison provides the Panthers exceptional leadership. She's a leader out there. She's one of our youngest players, but she's still a leader. She um, takes on the role of point guard pretty well. Um, she does a great job, um, point guard, shooting guard. Um, she can make the tough shots at the end of the shot clock, um, bring the ball up. She just does a great job leading as a young player, too. That's a really good point. Her floaters are awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, aside from nice. her playing, she brings like positive energy, I guess, and she's really smiley, I guess, I don't know, she's always happy. When, so she, when we nice get that little emotion court. out of her too, it like, it fires everyone yeah. up. Just a smile from her can fire everyone up. She's a little spark for us. Yeah. With the first half of the season over, Madison and the Panthers are determined to earn the top spot in the Missouri Valley Conference. We always have the goal of making it to the NCAA tournament, so that would be winning the conference tournament. And we always shoot for uh, finishing in the top of the conference, and we're in good position to do that, so we just have to keep doing that in the second half of the conference. In the Panthers' last home game versus Missouri State, Madison went 6 for 8 from the three-point line and 9 for 16 overall, with a total of 24 points. The Panthers won the game 64 to 56. If you haven't seen Madison and the Panthers play yet, make sure you attend their next home game, Friday, February 20th, versus Indiana State. The game tips off at 7 p.m. Pumping up the crowd at all of your UNI events is what these next teams are all about. The Prowl went to check out the impact that the Spirit Squads give to all of the fans. My name is Beth Sullivan and I'm from Piasta, Iowa. I'm a senior this year and I'm a co-captain. I actually came to UNI strictly for the dance team. Um, I knew about the program because the dance team had visited our high school um, back when I was in middle school actually. And I knew about their dance program and I tried out and decided if I'd make it, I went to UNI and if not, I was going somewhere else. 
My name is Allie Holton. I am a senior. I'm majoring in elementary and middle level education with a minor in literacy. And I am a co-captain on the dance team. My favorite part about dance team is probably the bond that we have together, um, getting to go perform at events around campus, at the games, and performing at nationals and state. It's all just a really cool experience. My name is Courtney Kalb, and I'm a junior. My major is Leisure Youth and Human Services with a Public Relations minor. And this is my third year on the team, and I'm from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. It's a cool feeling. It's very stressful at times, balancing like school and dance, but I'd say the fall is definitely the busiest, but it's very cool to get to be a part of all the games and events and community service and get to rep represent the university as like a dance team member. My name is Jenna Strom. I'm the intern coach for the cheer squad. Uh, my major is movement and exercise science, and I'm minoring in coaching. Um, I think they represent the squad, or I think they represent you and I um, as a whole. You know, they're at all the events, they're at um, most of the sports. You know, they go year round. Um, it's almost like they're the face of you and I because they're at so many events. Um, I think it's really important that they stay uplifted at all times. You know, it's hard because it gets tiring since it's a year-round sport. Um, but I think they do a really good job of that. Um, they remind themselves and each other that they are representatives of you and I, and they need to stay positive at all times. Uh, my name is Chris Malacone. I am a senior general studies major, and currently I am a captain slash coach. Uh, we've diversified a little. Instead of having two separate, one squad's better than the other, we actually trade off. You know, everybody gets a chance to be at the bigger games. Um, everybody does football. When I first started, that's not how it was. Uh, I think we've grown as a, a cheerleading group, specifically. Sydney Aris. I am a senior. I am captain of the all-girl team and I'm a chemistry marketing major and it's my last year. <laughs> um, being the same age as the kids that you're trying to lead is really hard. Getting the respect from them is challenging but overall I think they all we all went through you know some different times together and so we all know how it has to be you know we have to come into practice we have to get things done you know we don't have a choice you know Jenna's done a really good job I don't think the girls realize how much time she's put in outside of this program to really build this program up you know we're doing the best we can with what we have and hopefully next year it's a lot better for them though Welcome back to The Prowl and welcome to The Roundtable. The Roundtable will be a weekly discussion that we have uh, discussing various controversial issues in sports. Uh, this Roundtable, we are gonna talk about a little bit of you and I basketball. My name is Austin Hansen. I'm Ian Shohanik. I'm Andy McConnell. And I'm Riley Cosgrove. All right, let's get this discussion started. So as most of you probably know, the you and I basketball team is 13th in the country right now, 12th in the coaches poll, and I think they can go pretty far. I would go out to say, far enough to say, that they could win the national championship this year. I strongly believe that. Uh, I think that they have the talent. I think they have, they have the depth. I think they have the defense. Uh, I just really think that they, uh, they can go all the way once it comes to March Madness. Um, I guess I'm on the opposite end as, I mean, I'm a UNI student and I bleed purple, but I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. We still have, f I think, five regular season games plus the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. But um, I'm really confident that the Panthers could make their second Sweet 16 appearance ever. The last time we went to the Sweet 16, obviously it was um, very, sh it was a Cinderella story. You and I was 30 and four when they won that game. So um, now we're 22 and two. So um, record wise, we're looking pretty good, but I don't know. I don't know how far they can take it. <laughs> I would almost agree. I mean, it depends really on the seeding, like who gets placed where in the tournament. Mm -hmm. And all that really depends on, you know, the last couple weeks of the season, the tournament play, 
uh, you know, name recognition if you're Duke or, you know, all of them, you're going to be higher seed just because. Yeah, and as long as if, if you and I continues to go on this winning streak, and if they win these last all these last games, their placement in the tournament is going to be very good. Oh, yeah. But if they lose one or even two, they could move down, and that's be, that's going to be the deciding factor is if they get if they have to play someone in the top five, the first or second. I round. almost I almost feel like that helps you and I though. I feel like they need to lose one more game, whether it be regular season, Missouri Valley tournament one more wake-up call because I'm really mm -hmm. big on streaks I don't think you can keep winning and winning and winning if you look at Wichita State last year mm -hmm. they had the undefeated season and then they went in the tournament and they lost very early on um, I think I think that wake-up call that that experience of losing and getting one or two more under the belt I wouldn't want them to lose it'd be really oh. sweet if they won yeah. for the rest of the year on the way out but I think one or two more losses could benefit this team and kind of kind of push them to their limit I, I kind of agree with Austin I think as you see in most sports, you got it's all about getting hot at the right time. So, and I also think we can make. I think we can at least make it to the Final Four if you look in across like all of college basketball. There's no elite teams like mm -hmm. Kentucky, but they play one of the weakest conferences in America. Maybe the Big Twelve is maybe the toughest conference. That's it. And we're fifth in the country in defense. We're twentieth in three point field goal percentage and thirty first in free throws. So if you think about it, it always come, <coughs> most games always come down to free throws. So if we can just keep hit our free throws at the right time and just get hot, then you can easily see us in the Final Four. Well, I mean, you look at all these teams that are really good right now, and they've got, like, the, you know, they've got experience, they've got deep benches, and you and I has both of those. I mean, we've got Tuttle, who's probably one of the best players in the country right now. Um, I mean, we've got Jesperson and uh, Lowhouse and uh, Washpen that come off the bench and always just, you know, provide a big spark for our team. And like he was saying, you know, d defense, but... At times, they kind of, you know, show some holes. So it's really like, you know, can this team go all the way? I mean, they sh sure hope they do, but I don't know if, like, you know, they play a team like Iowa State mm -hmm. if they can compete with that speed. And yeah, it's definitely gonna take all the right things happening at the right time, and consistency, I think, is the key in there. Okay. Uh, definitely, I think uh, UNI's defense is one of the best in the country. I think they can hold anybody. I mean, they average teams average 51 points a game against them. No, they're probably not going to uh, hold Iowa State to 50 points. Kentucky, probably not. But if on the other end, if uh, Tuttle's having a great game, if you go inside, he scores 20 plus points, uh, as well as Bohannon is hitting his free throws or free throws and three pointers. Uh, I, I really think that there is a good formula there for a championship team. Well, yeah, look at this weekend when Bohannon was perfect from the field. Yeah. You know, if he keep, if he does that and Tuttle has a great game, you know, and then like Buss or Jesperson or somebody else off the bench or something, they're pretty much unstoppable. I agree. I agree. Well, and look at the teams that made to the championship last year. I believe they were ranked 12th and 7th. So, um, really, it doesn't matter where you're, once the tournament brackets are set, it really doesn't matter. It's anyone's game and you and I's 13th so we could easily make it to the championship oh yeah definitely definitely wow. um so what do you guys think about the you and I Iowa State debate uh you and I went above Iowa State this week in the rankings uh they went uh they are you and I is currently 13th and Iowa State is 14th uh, the teams never got a chance to play each other this year. You and I played all the Iowa teams, Drake and Iowa, obviously Drake twice. Uh, do you think you and I is a better team than Iowa State? I, I think so. Well, if you look at it, we have, what, two losses on the year, and Iowa State has five, well, six now, since they just got beat on Monday. I think we play better team ball than mm -hmm. Iowa State, and Iowa State more just relies on the three-point ball. So if they're not firing on three, like when they got beat by Texas Tech, yeah. they're going to have a way off night. It, they're they're one of those teams that where if they're when they're hot they're hot and when they're not they're not and um, I think f as far as the the advantage that Iowa State has over us if we want to do a debate over which team is better I mean they do play in the Big Twelve and they do have stiffer competition but not nothing really can tell you unless we actually play them and that's only going to happen in the tournament and if that happens that's going to be a big day in the state of Iowa oh definitely yeah. I think that would be awesome matchup that'd be really fun I know a couple of brackets from ESPN actually had us projected against Iowa State in the first or second round and which I think that'd be huge yeah mm -hmm. yeah I think that'd be I don't I, I hope it's not the first round though because um, 
I, I like to see Iowa teams keep advancing. And if one of us has to leave right away, that's kind of not fair. Yeah, that's why could you guys like imagine if we had to play Iowa State with a trip to the Final Four on the line? Ooh. How big of a game that would be, that especially would be for the whole state of Iowa. That would be if we played them to like let's say we, the, the both teams made it to the Elite Eight and we played them to go to the Final Four. Whichever school won, the other school would not would not would hear about it for years. Oh, yeah. It would be yeah. the yeah. new... Hands down, the biggest game, at least yeah. you and I, basketball yeah. history. It would be That'd the be new Kansas, you and I upset oh, story yeah. because oh, yeah. that was big. And if we played Iowa State, that would be even bigger. Definitely. The national yeah. tension's been great this year. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, perfect. Well, the you and I men's basketball team may not be the only... may not be having a record-setting season, but there is another team on campus who is wrapping up one of their most successful seasons yet. I got the chance to catch up with the UNI women's swimming and diving team last week and spoke to the senior swimmers as they bid their final farewell to an incredible journey. As their season comes to an end, seniors on the UNI women's swimming and diving team sat down with the Prowl to talk about their record-breaking season. So this year we've won four dual meets and we have a really good chance of winning our next dual meet, and so that's really exciting. Although I don't have any records personally on the board, we've been breaking them like crazy mm -hmm. ever since we've been here. So being a part of that is almost just as cool as breaking it. So I think that's been awesome too. Well, I understand that your season this year, you guys have won more than any of the seasons prior. Um, how do you think that has helped your team grow over the course of this season and maybe the course of your guys' four years here at UNI and as part of the swim team? I think one thing that it really helps is the confidence. We go into meets now and we're excited, we have our heads held high and we're ready to go and compete versus being nervous and thinking, oh, this team is going to kill us. We're ready to go and ready to compete now. I think one of the things is just the change in the team over like the last year and the fact that we're bringing in girls that are more they're faster and they're ready to swim and just the change in how that's helped the rest of us get faster and compete in practices. For these seniors, the Missouri Valley Conference Championship taking place next week in Carbondale, Illinois will be their last time as official members of the UNI Women's Swimming and Diving Team, but they're already looking forward to coming back to campus and cheering on their teammates and future teammates of this team. This team is going to grow so much and it's just going to get better from here and um, this year I really feel like is a big starting point to just climbing the ladder and getting up to the top. Us seniors talk about coming back for future senior meets and homecoming and doing some crazy things and just being there for these girls. It's going to be really awesome to see where this program goes. We're making huge strides and this is just the beginning. Um, while we've grown a lot in the past year or two, I think it'll only accelerate and fly from here. And um, also knowing that we were a part of um, helping change since this our senior class went through, you know, the coaching change and everything that went with it. It's going to be really cool to see um, that difference and see the impact it's going to make in the future. I think it's hard as um, like an underclassman at first to see that this will eventually end. So I think just noticing that and realizing to take every moment for what it is, good and bad, learning from it, um, all those things can make you a better swimmer day in and day out. My advice is to keep it fresh. I know it can get kind of monotonous sometimes and you can feel kind of down. And so heading into every workout with a fresh perspective and just reminding yourself um, what you're working towards each and every day. On assignment for the Prowl, this is Riley Cosgrove reporting for UNI TV. For the UNI women's soccer team, the countdown to the MVC soccer championship has already begun. To prepare for the successful journey, the women are putting in extra hours by playing spring soccer. The Prowl sat down with Coach Price and the team to enjoy a cup of tea and talk about American soccer. At 6 o'clock a.m. on Thursday morning, most college students are sleeping in, but if you go to the Cedar Valley Sportsplex in Waterloo, you will find the women of UNI soccer hard at work. Switch teams, 4-3, gray! But last season was good for us in terms of us getting back to the tournament and, uh, and hosting a conference game. Hopefully this year we can, you know, improve on that and take the, our team to the next level. We had a really strong last season. We played really well. We had great chemistry together. 
Um, how are we to make it to November 8th, the final championship? It was really exciting at times, but I think this season we we're looking forward to just getting out there and getting even farther in the tournament. Overall, when we look back at it, it was, uh, it was a good season for our team. With a rigorous schedule, the ladies are putting in as much time into practice as they can for this off season. Right now we're very much kind of in our conditioning and um, just trying to get kind of fitter and stronger and faster kind of mode. Um, we're allowed to do two hours of soccer, which obviously is, is good fun and um, allows us to kind of touch the wall and, and work on some things. Every Tuesday, Thursday, we wake up at 5 and come here to the sports puck. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we're always lifting in the weight room and doing um, different circuit training. It's very hard. We're definitely working hard to improve our game and our fitness and waking up a couple days a week and getting out here early when it's still dark and, you know, really attacking it when we're doing our conditioning drills. Once again, the team has very high expectations for both spring and fall seasons. We're going to set the bar really high um, for this group. I and mean, we've got an experienced group um, you know, right now in, in camp and obviously uh, when they return in the fall. We want to win the Valley Conference this year and put our names up on that board. Behind the success of any great team is a great coach. Coach Price uses his vast soccer experience along with his English accent to keep the girls on their toes. Well, I grew up in England and um, pretty much played soccer every day um, from like age of six to, well, 20. I think I just enjoy his accent a little bit, makes it a little bit more fun even if you don't like what he's saying. For me, it's normal. You know, for them, it probably sounds a bit weird. Good touch, Max. Unlucky. He's always just saying funny things, like you kind of look at each other and like, like that chili went right through me. <laughs> Why aren't you passing the ball to the right jersey? Got to get big, got to get narrow, got to get big, got to get narrow. Big, narrow, okay? Sarah! Oh, Sarah! You can't just kick it through someone. Kick the ball! Woo, unlucky! It keeps things kind of light and fun with our team and, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm the butt of their jokes, then that's fine. I, I certainly give as much back as I receive, so uh, it's not a big deal. The next time you can catch you and I back in action at home is April 20th against Upper Iowa. This has been Luke Hansen, Tyler Morford, and Austin Hansen reporting for The Prowl. Hi, Panther fans. Do you enjoy your mascots, TC and TK? Well, please help support them. Here with a video is our very own UNI TV, The Prowl. Enjoy the ride. and I advise the UNI mascot program. I'm Chris Bowden. I am an alumni. Uh, I was TC for three years and was a security member uh, before that. When I'm with the mascots, it's like magic, watching them step in front of a crowd. It's so exhilarating and so electrifying. It's also so special to watch them interact one-on-one -on -one with fans at birthday parties, tailgates, reunions, orientation, preview days, you name it. It's so exciting to see them each time that they're out and about. I think a lot of times people don't realize all the time that really goes in behind it. Because uh, there's a lot that TC does, whether it's on campus or off campus, he's really the face of the university. Uh, and so for him to be at events and games and community outreach events is really important. I think people would be surprised. We, we do over 150 appearances every single semester, and it takes a lot of work behind the scenes to pull off each and every one of these different types of appearances. Enjoy the ride With being involved in so many events, both on and off campus, uh, TC and TK uh, sometimes need a little, I guess you'll say, medical attention. I mean, they get baths, they need to be clean, you know, and everything, but over time, you know, sometimes they just get a couple bruises, have a little bit of wear and tear, and just require a little extra help along the way. It costs thousands of dollars to give the cats the care they deserve. You can help by going to www.careforthecat.com now. Thanks to Team TC and TK and Kobe Campbell for that very interesting video on our mascots. 
If you enjoyed watching the first-hand look at the lives and successes of your UNI Panther sports teams, find us online on any social media network. For UNI TV, The Prowl, I'm Mike Lieb. And I'm Nathan Grieve. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time here on The Prowl.